Hello, 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 and welcome back, all my beautiful friends from the internet. I hope every single one of you is doing very well on this fine, fine Tuesday evening, or whenever you're listening to this show, because I know a lot of people listen to this show throughout the week. It is so great to have you back. I'm so excited to have you back, and we are going to be reading some very, very fun and interesting stories today. So, before we head into the podcast, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, make sure to comment, and also subscribe. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever else you get your podcasts, then make sure you leave us a rating, and also please leave us a review. You can find us on, uh, well, never mind, I- I'll leave that part out of it. Anyways, um, I am your host, Luke Dick, and welcome back to the Reddit Asks Us podcast. I'm so excited to be back here with you today. This is a... This is a fun experience for me because, you know, I get to sit down here, listen to what everybody on Reddit has to say, and, you know, this is a, it feels like a a collective experience. We're enjoying this together, we're doing this, we're listening to these people's stories, we're reading them out loud, our our friends, I wouldn't even say these people, I'd say our friends on the internet, uh, and we're going to listen to what they have to say. So this week's episode is, this is from the main Ask Reddit page, what accident happened that ruined the sleepover. I don't know if you guys had a lot of sleepovers when you were a kid. I, I, <laughs> I, I think I had a fair amount of sleepovers um, when I was a kid. See, I, I am never, I've never been the type of person to. Like, like, I liked sleepovers. I I very much enjoyed sleeping over at people's places because you could stay up late as you want. A lot of my friends, see, my house wasn't necessarily the best place to have a sleepover at because I didn't really own any video game systems or anything like that. Um, we got up to other things, but, uh, or really much TV to watch either. Uh, so I always liked going to other people's houses to spend the night because I got to do things that I couldn't really do at home. Especially I had this one friend, we would always play like uh, Call of Duty in his basement until just like 3 a.m. And I just had so much fun. We would just grind zombies. He was so much better than me. Though, so I'd, I'd, uh, especially when we played like against each other, I'd get so frustrated. I'm like, man, it's not fair. You're so good at this. You get to play it every single day. But I did have one friend when I was a kid, I remember, who uh, had a very difficult time, almost impossible, sleeping over at somebody else's house. He tried when we were kids to sleep over, and he could never sleep over at anybody's house. And uh, I don't know, I don't know why. I I can't I, I can't say I ever really had that problem. I don't I don't maybe it's just a homesickness thing, or I'm not exactly sure. But I do remember uh, we were at a sleepover, and he had to get his mom to come and pick him up because he just could not sleep. Because he wasn't in his own room in his own bed. I, I know this happens with kids, but uh, I don't know. I, I guess, yeah. And, and he was, I think he was really the only one of our kind of little friends in that friend group who really couldn't sleep over in anybody's place. It was sad because he was, he, he was good vibes. He was good vibes. But anyways, let's move into this week's episode. So we've got the first comment coming from Castle of Arg. Former teammate, oh, sorry, <laughs> former teammate, former classmate, died whilst hosting a sleepover from a- at age 18 19 wow that is insane he had a heart transplant while a young well as a young child pre 10 years old i guess it caught up to him and his time came one night he had 3 to 4 friends over for the night and when everyone woke up in the morning he didn't i was not in attendance wow then there's a reply from p party um that's not so great for the attendees, but man, it's not the worst for the deceased. Getting to spend your last night surrounded by friends is not the worst way to end a life. And you know, that is actually very true uh, in, a, in a sense. That's crazy that uh, that happened, that people can just up and die. I actually read a story recently. Uh, somebody w- just underwent an experimental, uh, an experimental surgery, um, to get their heart replaced by a human, a quote unquote, quote unquote, human heart that was grown inside of a pig. And the guy died for, I mean, the guy lived for like three months, but then he just kind of like just died uh, because obviously, I guess the heart wasn't, you know, couldn't really match the body was rejected at some point and, and died. But this, you know, heart transplant, man, 
that's crazy. That is absolutely insane. But yeah, it's not necessarily, if you think about it, it's not really the the worst way to die, man. Like you, you go to sleep, you had a blast with your friends, you know, you guys, I mean, it's pretty traumatizing for your friends, but, uh, but in terms of you, cause obviously you're the one who's deceased, you actually probably didn't have the, you probably had a, a nicer death than most people get. You die in your sleep and you're, you died having like one of, you know, a, a, a night to remember, uh, 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 an experience with your friends. So to be honest, I, I prefer dying in that sort of way rather than, than dying in, uh, a lot of ways that other pe- that people end, <laughs> end up dying in. If you've ever seen A Thousand Ways to Die, there are many ways to die, my friends. So being surrounded by your friends uh, is, <laughs> is uh, it's probably not one of the worst ways to die. I'd much prefer that than to anything you ever see on a show like that. If you guys don't know what A Thousand Ways to Die is, oh my goodness. Ugh, just look it up and you will be traumatized. Anyways, um, so the next one comes from Rune3791. My wife's older sister uh, and that sister's friends were friend were chasing each other around the house when they were around 10 years old. They were running in a circle set up from where you go from a door off the kitchen into the yard and back through a sliding glass door into the living room. My friend was chasing my sister and my, and uh, my sister slammed the sliding... Oh my goodness. Friend was chasing the sister and sister slammed the sliding glass door shut. Wow, like so behind them. This was the 80s, and the house was old by then, so it was not safety glass. Friend ran full speed into the glass door, going straight through the glass. Story goes, it was as bad as you would expect without any fatalities. With massive bleedings and a hosp- massive bleeding in a hospital dash, I can't imagine being either a parent on... Uh, <laughs> I can't imagine being... Uh, a parent on the end of that phone call. That is insane. I've seen so many videos on Instagram of people just like sm- like smacking into glass doors or or uh, like at people's people's pets or something like that. They'll just run right into the door. Uh, I mean, it's cute and whatnot. It's you know to a certain extent because the glass that we have nowadays is probably a little bit safer than some of the glass that was back around then. But oh my god, could you imagine just a little ten year old girl just boom? right into it right into the glass and just shatters it that is insane that is gnarly there is quite a there is quite a couple gnarly uh quite a couple gnarly comments under this uh under this particular uh post man i i read quite a bit of that i'm like i I couldn't read this out (laughs) to you guys because it's just if you want to go if you guys want to go you guys can check out this one i mean it's it's just it's on ask reddit so you guys can see it for yourselves but geez there were a couple on here that i was like Damn, these are violent. What the hell? People <laughs> are having some violent sleepovers. Um, so this next one comes from Happy Gordon Freeman. Friend has a mouse running around in his attic bedroom. Oh my god. One kid decided to throw his dad's pocket knife he borrowed at it and sliced open another kid's neck when he threw it completely missing the mouse. That's insane. That's insane. That is some kid shit, though. That is some kid shit right there. Because when you're a kid, I feel like when you when you when you play with knives and stuff like that. Like I was taught as like my dad is a camper hunter type person, and I feel like I was taught at a very young age that things like you know knives and whatever can be fun and like machetes and things can be very fun. But I was to a certain extent I was instilled with a certain level of res- respect and fear of of these sorts of things strictly because of what they can do like I remember oh my goodness um my my friends I'm sorry my dad's friend one time in our backyard they were chopping wood and he literally swung the axe right into his leg and I'm like like and I was little when that stuff happened, and I remember my parents always teaching us about how how th- that stuff is like. You don't play with things like that. Like you, it's controlled fun. It's controlled fun. You know what I mean? It's in a you have to have fun in a controlled environment. Like I remember my dad as a kid, he had these super cool throwing knives. Like they're knives. Like they're they're in a little holster thing. And they're actually like for throwing. Like, come on, dude. To a 10-year-old, throwing knives? Are you kidding me? That's fucking sick. Like, that's awesome. Like, hell yeah, I'm going to use some throwing knives. But I remember, so my dad set up this little 
piece of wood in the backyard, like this big sheet of plywood or whatever. And, uh, he would watch me, you know what I mean? As I'm throwing these knives, making sure I'm doing it properly, you know, and he kept that level of supervision, right? Because obviously that's, it's extremely dangerous to be playing with throwing knives, but it was fun though, because, you know, under controlled fun and under supervision, that's that type of stuff. I think it teaches you a certain level of responsibility because if you mess up, it's gone last time ever. You're never touching it ever again. And that's what you deserve if you're going to mess up like that. But it was fun, though, because we drew a little bullseyes and little stuff like that. It was, it was a good time. It was a good time. But that is messed up. Somebody, that's crazy. That's crazy. Like, I couldn't imagine somebody takes their dad's pocket knife, just whips it, slices a kid's neck. I also want to, oh, my God. I'm sorry, guys. I also want to mention the kid did survive. The comments say the kid did survive. But that is just crazy, man. Could you imagine being there for that? You're literally just like, oh, you know, just playing around as a kid. You're, you're, you know, whatever. And then and it's like, oh my goodness, there's a mouse. Ah. And then someone takes a, fucking, takes a fucking pocket knife and just throws it and stabs some kid in the neck. Oh my God. That, that is some gnarly shit right there. That is crazy. All right. So uh, next one comes from two pull user two pull. My friend and I went for a walk in the woods with this Jack Russell Terrier. Every time I was around this dog, my eyes would itch, so I figured I must have been mildly, mildly allergic to this dog. After about an hour in the woods, we made our way back to his house, got inside, did the usual upstate New York check yourself for ticks, and, within, uh, and sat down to play video games. Within about five minutes of me and my friend being in the house, my friend looks at me and says something along the lines of, Dude, what is good with your eyes? So I go to the bathroom and look, my eyes are almost swollen shut. It turns out that on our excursion, I had touched poison ivy. And when we got to the house and my eyes started itching from the dog, and I, I thought it was from the dog and rubbed my eyes, it was horrible. My dad had to pick me up immediately. Sleepover equals ruined. Poison ivy, man. I feel like poison ivy, I don't think, I don't really think there's much poison ivy where I grew up. I grew up in a province of Canada called Saskatchewan. And uh, as far as I can remember, I don't really think there was much poison ivy. I think out here in Nova Scotia, where I'm living now, I spent time here as a kid too. Um, but I do remember there was like a poison ivy bush uh, that my, behind my grandparents' uh, garage here in Nova Scotia. And I was like, as soon as I heard there was poison ivy, man, like the, listen to the name of that. Like, Okay, poison ivy, worst things happen to you, it's going to itch, it's going to probably be extremely uncomfortable, but you're not going to die from poison ivy, at least I don't think so, unless you're like allergic to it, but you're not going to, you're not, that's not a death sentence for you, but just the, the sound and the name, man, poison ivy, like it sounds like, it sounds terrible, like it's, it sounds just, ugh, like it sounds, it sounds like it's, uh, it sounds much worse than it actually is, but, uh, and I've never, I've, I don't know anyone personally who's been touched by poison ivy, and I, I've now, I've never been touched by poison ivy. But uh, I, 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 from what I've been warned about, it seems it's like an extremely uncomfortable experience. But that would suck so bad. You, because the whole time you're like rubbing your eyes, you're thinking, <laughs> you're thinking it's because of the dog, and I know what that's like. Um, and. Uh, then you go to the bathroom and your eyes are literally <laughs> swollen shut because of uh, because of some poison ivy. Like, sheesh. Oh, that's a uh, that's a night ruiner right there. So, next one we've got is from LA nine one one nine. My friends, oh, this is this is crappy, friends. This is crappy. My friends' pet turtles, quote unquote, froze to death. Uh, they had got them about two weeks before and we had a sleepover and got mad because I told them uh, that I, that they didn't have the right supplies for them. They thought you could just put them in a tub of water with no heat lamp, sand, or foliage. It was the middle of winter and they didn't have good heating. They died and had been dead for a few hours while we were having drinks and playing cards. And then uh, <laughs> they didn't even bury them. They threw them in the trash. I did not stay for the night for many I did not stay the night for many years to come, bro. I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have gone back there ever, bro. You're killed. You, this somebody killed a turtle, and then they don't even have any remorse about it. Oh yeah, turtle's dead. Okay, throws it. Throws it in the garbage. A turtle, dude. That's messed up, bro. That's messed up. Throwing a turtle, bro, 
in the garbage bro imagine if the garbage was like half full bro for you'd have for like the rest of the week or next few, couple days dead turtles bro dead turtles in your in your in your garbage man that is so messed up man this is the thing bro if you're gonna get pets you have to be able to care for them bro you have to be able to care for your pets, man. I don't care if it's a turtle, a dog, a cat, a snake. I don't care what kind of pets you have. You have to be able to care for them. Because, man, th this is that's some, psycho, that's some psycho shit right there, bro. That is some psycho stuff. You can't get turtles like that or get any sort of animal and just be totally not remorseful when, when, they, when they die like that after you completely neglect them, bro. You... You have to be able to look after your pets, my friends. I know this upsets probably upsets a lot of redditors out there, man, because I know how important pets are to the pet and the uh, uh, to the Reddit community, my friends. R slash aw, bro. I'm on R slash aw, like literally. It's a w w, just aw, you know. Um, for those of whom who might be unaware, but I'm literally on that subreddit like every other day, just scrolling through, seeing what's up. Because man, it is it does give you a dose of 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 uh, you know the much needed serotonin or dopamine that you might need from your loving pets. And man, it pains me to see when people just don't care like that. I've had people who like who don't care about their dogs. I've gone to their house and then like I and I don't like I I try, I'll make an effort not to go back because it's like bro, your dog looks depressed. <laughs> your dog looks depressed as hell, man. You're not treating it right. Um. But that's messed up, bro. That's messed up. You definitely have to call people out, man. When you got to call people out on, on that sort of stuff. Because at that point, I don't really have much respect for you. I don't have much respect for you if you don't have respect for other life like that, man. Straight up. So this next one comes from Jesus1229. Male friend of mine got entirely too drunk and started bawling about a girl we both knew that wouldn't give him the time of day. The entire group of us ended up sleeping on the living room floor without pillows or blankets while listening to the host and his girlfriend have sex all night. The, the, the same guy that was upset got up twice in the middle of the night to pee on the carpet about four feet from my head. I never slept over at a big party ever again. This is a lesson for you, my friends. Always, always find a way home. Always, nothing ever, ever good happens when you have to stay over at the place that you're partying. No, that's a no-go, man. I don't care how far you have to walk. You got to get home, man. You have to get home. Because, man, after a certain point in time, after a certain point in time, it's like that 2 a.m., 3 a.m. cutoff period. That is where you start to see some wild stuff, man. That's where you start to say, oh, man, I... I I'm very regretting the fact that I did not go home. That's you got to find your way home, man, or at least you got to get together with some friends and figure something out. That's disgusting. Also, a lot of these I'd skipped over because a lot of them are about bodily excretions. I'm like that they were nasty. I couldn't even there's a couple of them who I don't even think I could have couldn't got could have. You can read them on your own and go to this uh post on the subreddit, but uh I couldn't have gotten through. I couldn't have gotten through it on my own. With, in this in this podcast i'm i'm a little bit squeamish like that though i got to admit i'm a little bit like that i'm not not really much when it comes to like blood and and violence and stuff but when it comes to bodily functions and whatnot i i can't man i just can't it's too gross man it's too nasty i can't cuz i'm picturing it in my head and then it just gets all ugh, it just grosses me out man i'm and ugh, i can't i can't take i can't take that uh and I, yeah man Another thing that you run into the just some of the weirdest people too at the end of those parties, man. You just people will just talk your ear off about some something that you just don't. You're like, I don't even know you, dude. Like, and then they'll they'll they'll, they'll make an effort to 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 keep talking to you, and you're just like, bruh, like let me go. Like this is, and then you have really nowhere to go, and you're kind of just there. Oh, it's weird. Very awkward experiences, my friends. Always, lesson there, always find a way home. I don't even care if you have to leave early. Sometimes that's a sacrifice you have to make, man. Sometimes the sacrifice you have to make is leaving early. So next one comes from a Savagely Sleepy. No cap. I relate on that one. 
Uh, in elementary school, I got invited to my crush's house, and while it wasn't a sleepover, we were all uh, hanging. We were hanging all day. She gave me a lifesaver, hard round candy, but I thought it was the gummy ones. Oh, geez. The, because the brand has different kinds. I didn't like the flavor, so I tried to swallow it whole. Oh, my God. Started choking on it, and her older sister had to do the Heimlich maneuver on me, uh, to which I spewed the candy and a gloop of esophageal mucus the size of a slice of bread. That's disgusting. All over the kitchen floor. I think I died of embarrassment and never spoke to her again. I literally don't know what happened after that because I was so <laughs> flustered. Yep, that's a fat L, man. That is definitely an L. At the end of the day, though, I feel like it's it's tough because it was when you're young. I feel like it's so hard to think, like to to have that uh, outside perspective and and that introspection on on what's happening. Because as a kid, everything is very, um, you know, you the world and reality is very foregrounded in your in your. Uh, perception you're living very much in the moment you know kids don't have the ability to think sorry if you guys hear that's my knuckles cracking on my bed um kids don't necessarily have the ability to think as abstractly and as introspectively as adults do and as you do as you get older so it's hard to tell a kid not to be embarrassed when something like this happens because kids don't really necessarily have the ability to have that perspective of just like you know, because in, in okay, let me put it to let me just tell it put like put it to put it to you guys this way. If that happens, something like that happens to you old happens to you when you're older. The best move, the best move, is to laugh and think it's hilarious and think it's gross, but also think it's funny. Because the more that you own up to that, the less awkward it's going to be, and the less other people around you are going to understand that there's a certain vibe of you being able to be comfortable with yourself and and uh, comfortable with life, life, things like this that happen. Because that is life, my friends. That is what happens. We all, from once in a while, choke on a lifesaver and need to have the Heimlich maneuver done on us and puke it up on the floor, my friends. This is, this is, we all have these moments. We all have these moments of embarrassment. And so, you know, it's just so tough because as an, as a kid, like, as you think about something like this that happens to you, like when you're a kid and you're so embarrassed and you might think about it when you're later and just be like, you know what? This is a funny story because it does become funny the longer time passes. So keep that in mind next time, th next time something embarrassing happens to you, just try your best to go with the flow, man, go with the flow because we are all inherently valuable and flawed as people and no one can act in a perfect manner even doing this podcast like I bet you any money there's things I've said or things I've done on this podcast in the past that if I watched back some of those episodes I would cringe in my pants I would just be like oh my god this is horrible but at the end of the day like this is something I want to do, you know, like this is this is the way my life and direction has taken me. And you know what? As long as I have pride in myself and um, as long as I'm willing to admit to my mistakes, then you got to look back as long as I'm not being disrespectful to anybody. You got to look back at some of the stupid things that you say and stupid things that you do and embarrassing things that you do on accident or on purpose. Uh, and just own up to it and, and, you know, just, just, just try to treat it as, as a, as a, as a comedic experience, you know, try to laugh it off unless you're being outwardly disrespectful, but, um, I try my best not to be doing that. But, uh, but in terms of anything embarrassing happening to you or anything you say or that might be embarrassing, just, just own up to it, man. And just laugh, just laugh because at the end of the day, it's funny, man. Everybody chokes on a little life saver every once in a while. Come on. Friends, none of you, none of us can sit here and say that we've never choked on a little bit of a lightsaber. So I'm so close to saying lightsaber. I want to say lightsaber. <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, a little bit of a tangent. So next one comes from Bips Bahoy. That's actually really fun. Um, I like that. In fourth grade, my friend was supposed to sleep over. I lived in an apartment building, and my apartment was on the second floor, and my grandparents lived on the first floor. My grandma often picked me up from school at around 3, and my parents would come home at around 5. So I'd chill for a few hours until my parents got home. Well, school day ends, and me and my best, friends are, uh, me and my best friend are excited to have the sleepover. We get to my grandma's apartment, and I tell her we're going to have to wait a bit for my parents. This is when shit starts to go down. We were talking for a while in the living room, doing fourth grade things, then out of nowhere... She drops to the ground and starts shaking. I'm like, oh no, she's having a seizure or something, 
wrong -o. She then sits up very straight and pretends to not know who I am and then pretends to be possessed. She starts trying to hit me and is talking in this voice that's super cringy thinking back on it, but I was absolutely terrified. She ended up hitting me and scratching me a few times, and I was just worried, saying, uh, name, insert name, please stop, it's not funny anymore. My grandma heard the weird-ass noises she was making and sat my sad pleas for her to stop and called me to the kitchen. I told her everything that happened and my grandma called my friend's grandma and told her she needed to pick her up right now. I didn't go back into the living room where this all happened. Then this girl had the nerve to walk into the kitchen and ask what was wrong and why I was upset hated her she turned out to be very manipulative and terrible as a human being in general cut her off in the fifth grade or so everyone has these like these there's there's these kids man there's these kids uh and like okay i don't again i don't want to talk as if like i'm on some sort of moral pedestal here but or or behavioral ped pedestal but yo there are some kids that when you're a kid are just something's different. Something's weird. Like they act in weird ways. They do weird stuff like this. And it's just like, bruh, like that is, I, I don't know how to pinpoint it, but something about that just doesn't quite fit. It isn't quite, quite normal. Like, why would you do that? Why would you just like somebody you're not even really close friends with? You just start having a whole like possession thing, scratching people, hurting people. Like there was a couple of kids that I knew growing up and I'm like, I'm like, I can't even, I'm overwhelmed by the energy that, that you bring to a, to a room. I'm not saying that these people are bad people. I'm just saying there are some there are some eccentric folks out there, my friends. There are just there. Let's put it like that. There are a couple eccentric people out there that uh, f maybe like you know float to the beat of their own drum. They and uh, you know it's it's just they just it's just weird weird little things like that. Like like just why would you do that? Why would you start like acting like you're possessed and having like a seizure, man? Like that's that's so that's not normal behavior. Come on, guys. Like come on, that's not normal. Like that's that's weird. That's weird. <laughs> I, I just try I'm not trying to insult anybody or make anyone feel bad about themselves but it's just like bruh that type of stuff is some weird behavior man especially like I don't know but people kids are kids kids are kids man I, I can't I can't I can't say too 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 much uh, this one comes from travel stars uh, we went to the night shop to get some hot Cheetos but forgot the keys <laughs> to the apartment it was a high building and we couldn't get in, so we woke up our neighbors at 4 a.m. to ask if we could climb from their window to ours. Luckily, the window was open. They were surprised by this, but we climbed from their window to ours while drunk with five bags of hot Cheetos in our hands. That was an adventure on its own. At the end, we came to a realization that there was a spare key under the doormat at the front door, which we did not think about until the moment we got in the apartment, so it was all for nothing. That it's always those moments, man. It's always those times. Like you'll go through a through a whole ordeal to get something done, and then at the very end, you realize there was like a a, a totally obvious and easy way to do it. I uh, I know what that feeling is like all too well, my friends. It is it is a uh, discouraging feeling. But this sounds like quite the adventure, though. Uh, there was a reply here from clownfish soup if i were the neighbor i would have demanded one bag of cheetos as payment for waking me up at four i would have been like hell yeah man they had five bags of cheetos bro you can't you can't spare one bag one measly little bag of cheetos come on man you should have gave that as a donation man you should have been like thanks for helping us gave him one bag. you have five bags of cheetos bro and you wake these people up at 4 a.m I think that's I think that's true. I think clownfish soup is onto something here, man. You gotta you gotta you gotta provide the the uh, the generosity, bro. You have to you know what goes around comes around, man. You you know you never know. You gotta maybe the, you know maybe that person might need or you might need help from that person at another time, man. And what are they gonna say? They're gonna be like, bruh, you didn't give me my Cheetos, man. I didn't get the Cheetos from you. So what's the relationship here? You never know, man. You never know. <laughs> That's a little dramatic. Anyways, um, so this one comes from Doug, 1974. Slept over at a friend's house around 10 years old, and we shared a queen bed. Woke up in the middle of the night, and the friend had pissed. Found out this. Uh, found out after this was uh, after that this was common for him. 
the bed and uh, had pissed the bed and moved to the floor, but failed to wake and tell me. Oh my god. I rolled to the spot and woke up because of the cold wetness on my side. I went to the washroom to wash up and the floor was soaking wet when I walked in the dark. I turned on the light to discover his drunk dad had pissed all over the floor. I couldn't get out of there fast enough in the morning. That is disgusting, man. That is like, come on, bro. No, oh, he got the double piss whammy, dude. He got the, uh, I'm trying to come up with like a creative name. The, the, uh, oh, I can't think of anything. Anyways. Bruh, that is disgusting, man. Oh, yo. I don't know if like how common this is among people, but I feel like when you're a kid, like a little kid, every little kid pees in their bed, okay? At least once. If you never did that, then I full-heartedly salute you, my friend, because you are a trooper, and that is extremely impressive. However, bruh, you got to be able to, as a kid, man, you have to be able to, like, you got to talk about this with your parents, man. You got to be, come up with the game plan, man, in case something like that ever happens again. You can't just not tell your friend. That's disgusting. That's horrible. It's as if they're not going to notice. He rolled over. Oh, oh, that's so nasty. And then to get the double whammy going into the bathroom and there's just like piss all on the floor from an adult, from a whole adult. Come on. Oh, that is a tough one. That is a tough one. I am so sorry that happened to you, Doug. So this one will probably, probably be our last one of the evening and of this, uh, this long form sort of, uh, Tory telling ranty little content that I've got here for you guys comes from Spartan2842. Around age 10, I had a friend on the block who had every Nerf gun you could imagine. He even had the purple Nerf crossbow that fired these huge yellow darts. I do remember those, and I had a friend who had one. Was ridiculous. Uh, man, those Nerf wars, bro. Got intense, man. We, man... We really grew up with some really cool stuff. The gener like gen like because I'm part of the I'm part of Generation Z or whatever. We grew up with some cool toys, man. Lego like that. We had some crazy Lego sets, man, and uh, just Nerf guns and all this stuff, man. We had some. We had the tech. You know what I'm saying? We had the tech. All these kids on the street are sleeping over at his place, and naturally we plan a house-wide Nerf war. My friend is running down the stairs, and I raise up the crossbow to shoot him. Oh my god. As soon as I fire, he slips backwards, sliding down the few steps, putting his eye level with this massive yellow dart fired right at him. He screams of pain, ended the Nerf war pretty quickly. Everyone got sent home, and I was never allowed over to their house again. I'm not sure how bad I injured him. I just know he had to wear an eye patch for a few months and started wearing glasses all the time after. No way. No way. That's an accident, though. That's the worst. That's the worst thing, my friends. I remember uh, one time me and my friend were, like, playing on his trampoline, and I kind of, like, jumped towards the edge of the trampoline. I just, like, sent him off, and he, like, fell. Uh... And he heard him. He heard his stomach like pretty bad, and I felt so bad about. It. He was crying to his mom, and I'm like, I didn't mean to do it. I didn't mean to do it. It's my fault. And I'm like crying. It's it sucks, man. Especially when it's not it, and it's not your fault. Ah, oh, those ones, those ones get you, and then you get banned, of course, from the house, and you're like that kid. Oh, I shot him in the face. He's never allowed back ever again. And then you get to see all friends, your friends having fun at Nerf Wars, and you're like, oh, I can't go. I almost killed him. I blinded him. <laughs> Anyways, okay, friends. Um, let's uh, let's wrap it up here. So I want to thank every single person for tuning into the show this week. Sorry if the energy is a little bit weird for this episode. I'm uh, life is is a little bit weird for me right now. I'm kind of just I'm not no I wouldn't say I'm going through anything. I'm just there's just some weird things that are kind of going on, you know, with me personally. I'm sorry if I can't bring that same energy every week. Uh, I just want to read these stories to all of you, and I just want to share in this experience because we are a group. This is a team, man. I feel like you guys are all on my team. It's kind of wild, actually. 
I feel like we're all, yeah, we're all, we're all, we're all part of this. We're all one. So I'm sorry if I can't deliver. Uh, I try to read the stories to you guys, trying to keep you entertained. I'm sorry if I can't give you the most um, upbeat, interesting anecdotes. My bad. I'm. I apologize for that. However, I'm so so glad and happy that you guys tune in every single week. I'm, it really uh, is quite. Uh, it's quite an honoring experience. I feel. I feel very uh, grateful for having all of you guys listen into the show. It's. Uh, it's pretty awesome. I couldn't. I like. I, I really couldn't ask for anything more out of anybody. I'd, it's. It's. It's amazing. It's really. Really is. So thank you guys so much for tuning into the show. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, make sure to comment, and also subscribe. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever else you get your podcasts, make sure to leave us a rating, and also, please, leave us a review. And I am your host, Luke Dick. I will see y'all next week. Peace out.